newspapers in a few moments' time. Now, the upcoming standardisation of all EU government building contracts and tenders in euro codes provides the Irish construction sector with a golden opportunity to adopt best practice and indeed to explore new business markets. That's according to John Gormley, Minister for Environment, Heritage and Local Government. Minister Gormley was speaking at the launch by Engineers Ireland of an online training facility for engineering designers, contractors and clients designed to expand the introduction of Euro codes in March next year, the EU's new construction standards. Joining me now to tell me more about this introduction is the Director General of Engineers Ireland, John Parr. John, welcome. Good morning to you. Good morning, Gareth. Tell me about Euro codes. Gareth, the Eurocodes, they're a series of 10 European standards providing a common approach for the design of buildings and other civil engineering works and construction products. And I suppose, in essence, what I would like to say about them is, is we have a huge opportunity in this country now to get ready for an enormous market of 1,300 billion euros right across Europe. And essentially what, what Eurocodes will allow, allow happen is to increase the competitiveness of, of Irish and European civil engineering firms and contractors and designers and indeed product man manufacturers uh, in their worldwide activities. So it, it's a great opportunity and even more so for Irish engineering firms because if one just considers the last 10 years and the experience that's been built up in this country... Uh, it gives us a tremendous competitive advantage. Um, as I say, it's, it's an enormous market. Uh, we at Engineers Ireland will be providing online training in this. And um, certainly, if one considers the, the, the success of Irish companies, of Irish engineering companies overseas over the last number of years, companies like, like Project Management and Arab and RPS and Cement Roadstone, of course, and of course ESP International, um, you know, one just needs to dwell on those for a moment to consider how successful we can be if we take the opportunity. Like when you compare to where we were this week in 2006, John, compared to where we are now, I mean, the void in terms of, of, of the difference in, in the landscape is quite shocking, isn't it? It's certainly, it's certainly significantly different here at home. But, you know, we, we can curse the darkness all we want, yes. but we have an opportunity now um, with, with, you know, to, con to continue indeed here at home and, and uh, maybe continue with our infrastructural projects because our tender prices are down of the order of 25% and what they were in the past. All the major projects have come in on time and within budget and to certainly an enormously uh, improved standard uh, right across the, the, the construction sector in this country over the last few years. But, you know, because it's gone down here, um, we all knew, I think, Garrett, that it wasn't going to be able to continue at the pace that it continued. So, but what we have now is a fantastic opportunity for Irish firms and Irish engineers to avail of it an opportunity to tap into this 1,300 billion market right across Europe. Mm. In essence, what it means is that one can have Irish engineers here designing buildings, um, sitting in an office, for example, in West Cork, and designing you know, schools in the Netherlands, bridges in Germany, and, and hospitals in Paris. Mm. But of course, what it also means, and this is, this is particularly important, but it also means that into the future, um, all of our buildings here in this country, all of our, uh, our public works buildings, the National Roads build, uh, um, Construction Projects, Department of the Environment, local authorities, health, schools, um, all infrastructural projects will have to be designed to Euro code standards. So the, the message I would love to get across is that there's a great opportunity for Irish engineers and Irish, in the construction sector in particular to avail of this online training now that engineers are under providing so that they're going to be ready not only to, 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 to um, uh, give the advantage to Irish firms but for themselves also to perhaps work with other firms who wouldn't have availed of the opportunity to get up to speed in the right now. Eamon Ryan yesterday announced details of a major new strategy to create up to 30,000 green-collar jobs by pushing Ireland to the forefront of the digital technology revolution. Now, now he, apparently he says the government is going to give this priority. I, I mean, is, is this connected in some way to, to, to what's happening, to what we're discussing this morning? Not, not, not directly, but I think one must obviously welcome every, every, every um, uh, investment and every uh, sure. commitment to future uh, job creation uh, in this area. And I think if one just considers um, the, 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 the energy, the environment, 
uh, the the uh, whole climate change area, the water area over the next number of years. There are going to be great opportunities there for engineers. Certainly things at the moment in the construction side of engineering aren't great. But John, I mean, pushing the green economy in the current climate, is it not a bit pie in the sky for many people's likings? People this morning who are worried about paying the electricity bill, who are worried as to whether they'll get onto the dull queue this week. You know, I, a, a lot of what the green economy spells to them is somewhere out there that eventually they may consider in six or seven years time well you know i think maybe the role of government and 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 one must i think uh, at this stage you know applaud them for this i think they've got to consider the future also certainly at the minute there's a lot of people um uh, worried about about the immediate future yeah. um but if one dwells totally on that and forgets about what's, what, what's coming down the line for all of us um and indeed the generations to come uh, I, I think we would certainly be accused of taking our eye off the ball so, you know, I, I think it's important that we also consider the, 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 uh, a number of years away as opposed to just now. Certainly, it's, it's very important that we do everything we possibly can to, to, to uh, hold as many jobs as we, as we can. And I think that, that, that we in the engineering uh, sector, we, we, we're totally committed to the whole smart economy concept because I think that, that for the smart economy to work, um, it is going to take engineers, primarily of all of the professions, it's going to take engineers to make it work. And, you know, we're totally committed to that. And part of that smart economy, obviously, is going to be the green agenda. Um, it's, it's not the whole smart economy, but it's part of it. And, you know, we are, we are committed to that. Thanks for talking to us this morning, John. That's uh, the Director General there uh, of Engineers Ireland, John Power. It's just 18 minutes past seven. Traffic and travel.